only power that exists in the world is your creativity. And governments, they rape and pillage that creativity with all of the paper shuffling, if I could summarize it thus. They don't have any creativity. You got the creativity. You produce goods. You produce uh, ideas. You produce magnificent new inventions. And then they come along and license them. <laughs> Take it away from you, right? That's basically how it happens. Laissez-faire capitalism is the ideal behind their future city in cyberspace. They have created the first sovereign city in cyberspace. And you may, oh, yeah, that's a bunch of, yeah, 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 but it's all, it doesn't mean anything. It does mean something. Because you try finding a place on this earth now where you can create a sovereign nation. They looked for four years. They put an advertisement out on The Economist, the biggest economic publication in the world, right? Everybody reads The Economist. They put a full-page ad in that in 1995, spent $40,000, and it said, we declare ourselves to be a sovereign nation. We are called Laissez-Faire City. We're going to be in cyberspace, and we claim our right to be free and untouched by any government of any kind anywhere in the world. You know why they did that? Now, our expert here will know about the law of tacit admission, I think it's called. Tacit admission. If somebody doesn't come along after you've announced it to the whole planet and say, you can't do that, it's done. It's a done deal. They didn't only do it once, they did it twice. Anybody got any uh, problem with us being a sovereign nation in cyberspace? Get out here and tell us now then. Nobody showed up, of course. They couldn't because they're using exactly the same strategies that all of our kings and patriarchs use to claim power over an area. Except these guys are not into control. They can see what's coming. I can see what's coming. All your emails going to get scammed. All of your accessed internet pages are going to be recorded. All of the information about what you think, like, love, hate, is going to be in a data bank. So that a vast amount of electronic surveillance technology can keep you down. So where's the only place? They looked all around the world. They came very close. They went to Peru. And they met Fujimori, who's gone into his third term. And they said, hey, Fujimori, all we want is 100 square miles. That's all. Just give us 100 square miles and give us a 50-year lease. And I promise that no other nation, no government will ever bother us. Do it, please. They were this far away. Fujimori was real interested. And right about that time, the Shining Path, Maoist guerrillas started knocking hell out of Peru, and Fujimori couldn't do it. He was already taking too much heat. He was executing all the Maoist guerrillas behind the door, you know, shut up. That was how he cleaned up a problem. That's the truth. There was nothing <laughs> diplomatic about it. You guys getting snuffed. So he couldn't take the heat of being the first country on earth to offer this wild bunch of characters 100 square miles. And they got really depressed. Five years searching. Then a bunch of young kids came along, the 20 year olds, the cyber gizmo kings. And they said, You guys, you can still do it, but not on Earth, in cyberspace. For five years, they've developed the software. They've developed all of the technology for encryption because that's what's coming next. You try and get yourself good encryption software two years from now, <coughs> that's what's going to happen. <coughs> encryption software is now treated as a weapon. Did you know that? Yeah. It is a weapon. It is a dangerous weapon. Can you believe the shit? So, what they've been doing is they've been creating a super encrypted, multiple firewalled cyber nation space with multiple servers all around the planet. You knock this one out, won't make any difference. All the information goes to this one. That's why the internet was developed in the first place, wasn't it? They bomb here and it's still here. Well, they've taken that to a high level of intelligent development, totally encrypted. So I went down and I checked out these characters, wild characters. <sighs> these guys are not taking no shit from nobody. Their leader, their leader is about 56. He's an ex-Hollywood film producer who fled America five years ago because he knew exactly what was coming. And this guy is a passionate defender of sovereign individual rights and free capitalism. Laissez-faire, leave me alone. You know what the French means? Get out my face. 
nothing to do with you how much money I make or what I create or what I think or if I want to take this sacred plant to change my state of consciousness you can get ruptured because what you are feeding our children Ritalin and all this crap that's that's the problem that's the drugs he's very familiar with the CIA drug running operation because he's got an ex CIA member working with him when I sat down and talked to this guy oh, oh, what this guy told me it's true harp is already online it's working and they made a mistake a couple of years ago there was a forest somewhere in America 300 square kilometers of forest during the night just went <laughs> like that all the trees <laughs> was it <laughs> it was a programming mistake Harp was activated He's, and I said how does it work how does it work is it laser he says I just think of it as being inside the laser there's something else that was all he could tell me then he tells me we don't need all of these torture techniques and brainwashing techniques for people we don't need that shit because we've got Burundunga <laughs> now how many people here know what Burundunga is anybody okay here's a first I got one new piece of information Burundunga is the ultimate truth drug it's a na native plant to the Amazon okay now I've taken a lot of Amazonian plants and been in some pretty amazing adventures but this one <laughs> you give it to anybody and not only will they tell you anything that you want them to tell you they will do anything you want them to do and the next day they'll forget it all you need about this amount cup of tea sugar sandwich Burundunga. <laughs> I said, you got this shit? He says, yeah. And sometimes we play with it. Uh, we were at this consular party a couple of weeks ago, and we thought we'd just give it to some of the politicians. <laughs> so, you have no idea what transpired that night, and nobody else does either. Because they all forgot the next day. I'm not kidding you. They have got this already. They've had it. They don't need MK Ultra brainwashing. They got this, he tells me. Now, so what are they doing with the CI game? Well, he's been well trained. Uh, he's now the security, one of the security, he's the security guard for the president of Costa Rica. And two days after I met this guy, before I met this guy, he had blown away a couple of guys trying to kill the president of Costa Rica. So he was a serious doing his job agent. But you can't just clump them all together and say, it's a bad guy. So I says, what do you think about America? He said, it's uh, micromanagement doesn't work, he says. It doesn't work. Micromanagement means controlling every tiny part of people's lives. He said, it doesn't work historically. It never has, never will. And you have to get that really clear. We all have to get this. It's never going to work. You can't manage people's realities down to, you know, when they pee and when they poop. <laughs> you can't do this. I mean, we won't take this. It's not going to happen. So, Lesifer City, ladies and gentlemen, if you are interested in doing any kind of work in cyberspace in the future, and some of you may, I'm certainly going to be doing it, you have to get involved with this technology, otherwise it's going to be an open book. And you're going to have a whole bunch of problems that you could easily get rid of. Because these guys have been on a job for five years, they're serious, they've got money, they're talented, they're intelligent, and they hate government with a passion. I've never seen a guy frothing. You think I'm bad? I mean, this guy's 56, he's chain smoking and he's oh, and, and he's given us the lectures about the future of cyber corporations, digital money, right? So you'll have all of your business in a place that doesn't exist here, but there will be a link between that dimension and this. So you can take all of this digital money. They've already developed it. It's called the Digital Rand. They've got the Digital Money Trust. You know, the old paper stuff, we know it's going. And they're on to the next wave. So, please check them out, lfcity.com. There's some very smart cookies down there, and they're a riot. That's what I loved about them. <laughs> they're full of piss and vinegar. I mean, we just partied, and we, and we had these incredible lectures. Amazingly talented people. But the leader, he said, I'm going to get the gonads of the government. Because he said, they have killed so many of our children with drugs. 
He said, I can't stand this shit. And he's doing something about it. So we need more of that energy. Maybe with a little less of infallibilism. But we need it. Because it's coming down the pipe, and it's coming down very soon. Slavery or sovereignty. This year is going to be a very special year because, uh, for one thing, it's a dragon year. Did you know that? People in the Orient wait 12 years for a year like this. Because there are 12 animals in the Oriental Zodiac. Do you happen to know your animal? What are you? You're a what? You're a dog. Okay. Do you know what you are? Depending on the year you're born, it's unlike our uh, yearly, monthly cycle. It's every year a different animal, the dog, the rooster, whatever. This year is the dragon, right? The dragon has phenomenal energy. It's the only one of the 12 that doesn't have a physical representation. In other words, there's no real animal called a dragon, right? It's a celestial one, right? It doesn't exist. It's in your imagination. Is it now? Dragons and snakes have been with us for all of history. The dragon year is always characterized by sudden reversals. You'll be going through all kinds of shit in your relationships and the money and the tax and the this and the that. And you think, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. And then suddenly, <laughs> the whole thing will change. <laughs> Cut. New scene. That's the kind of energy that the dragon represents. I've seen it since the beginning of this year. I've seen friends go through crisis after crisis. Miraculous transformation. Amazing healings. Suddenly, whoo, it's all different. Based on what? Well, everyone's a sovereign individual, and everyone's got their way of dealing with it, right? I've seen it personally. I live in Nelson. Nelson is a spaceship, to tell you the truth. <laughs> it looks like a town. It looks like Canada. But in fact, everybody lives in Nelson. They're actually on a spaceship. And they're watching this holographic movie called Earth 2000. <laughs> you think I'm joking? Nah. <laughs> I didn't tell you where all of this started. Now, ho how many were here last year so I don't bore your arse off? Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to make it real simple. What brought this whole adventure about for me was a massive brain operation, I'll call it. Whereby... I became in contact with astonishingly beautiful flying lights in the sky. Now, I'm not going to call them UFO because they're not unidentified. They're not unidentifiable either. Seven years, ladies and gentlemen, every night, almost, I would go to a spot in the woods by myself with my dog, and I'd stand there and I'd do a little bit of a ceremony and... Sure enough. I said, shit, was that hallucinating? Well, if it happened once or twice, you could say, shit, it's a hallucination. Happened about 1,560 times. And what it did to me was to completely shock every idea in my system, every theory, everything I thought I had a handle on, got the shit kicked out of it because you cannot understand what this is. You cannot get it. You cannot control it. You cannot, you cannot even begin to imagine what this is. But you can find out what it does. You don't have to know what it is if you know what it does. And what it does is it takes a little larval human being who's on 2% of their capacity, like almost the whole planet, because that's the way it was programmed and planned and done to keep you all sewn up on 2% as a larval human. You only need 2% to get around this planet. What do you need? You eat, you shit, you have sex, you have children. That's it. 2% is enough. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to be a genius to do that kind of stuff. So 98% of the rest of it is in the hands of the family of dark. They've always known. Keep this away from them. And by some sheer magic that I have no comprehension of, these lights have been showing up in lots of people's lives, and everybody has their own paradigm that they try and warp around it. 
or a batch of Palladians, or a batch of Americans, or it's the doodahs or the hoodahs, right? And I went through all of these, and it was, it was like being in Japan. I did Zen for years in Japan. And you think you've got the answer, and you go to the master, and you say, I've got the, I've been meditating for two years. And the question is, the question is, what is one? <laughs> okay. Deal with it. Go home. What is one? And you'll have fried brains for breakfast for the next three years trying to figure that one out. <laughs> because every answer is just a concept, just a concept, just a thought. And if you want to know what one is, you've got to become one. Well, that's what that's like, right? And everything's they got it figured out. In this contact, he goes, it's this and this and this and this. That's all just human baffle gab and rubbish. It's a tiny attempt by a larval being to figure out a dimension that is so enormously magnificent. You're never going to figure that out. Never. So I stopped trying to figure it out, and I started just getting it. OK, let's boogie. <laughs> and we started doing experiments. I was with Will, Sir Lawrence Lupo. I dragged his ass out into the field. I said, you see this man? <laughs> Because it's right there in front of us. <laughs> I says, OK, you ready for an experiment? Well, he says, OK. I said, we're going to start breathing in unison, and we're going to make that stroboscope at the same speed as our breathing. So we started. And we just went, oh, it's doing it. <laughs> and he doesn't get easily blown. And he's like, <laughs> So then we sped up. <laughs> go left, go right. Ah! So the two of us went home that night, and we were totally knackered. It was like, I don't get it, Lord. So now there's some good information about these things in a very holy book. It's called The Keys of Enoch, written by J.J. Hurtak, who's got two PhDs, not just one. He's a PhD, PhD. <laughs> you open that book and read up about Merkaba. Not Drunvalo's Merkaba. Much more ancient than that. Mer, light, ka, electromagnetic body, invisible, astral, call it what you want, ba, physical body. Light, thought, or electromagnetic body, physical body. The vehicle of vehicles, the divine vehicle, is what Merkaba means. So guess what that might be hinting at, winking at you from the sky. Guess what it could be hinting at? That you and that ain't separate, never have been, never will be. And this is a reminder, the simplest reminder you could imagine. Can you get much simpler than that? Dark sky, bright light, doesn't get much clearer. <laughs> so I go home every night like <laughs> So I study physics, I study anthropology, I study mathematics, I go to this professor and that professor and this contact and these, and I interview a whole bunch of people. Do you know what this is? And they all give me a slant on it. But nobody can tell you what it is. But I can tell you what it does. You can invoke this, you can have your own experience. You figure it out. You gotta have a strong desire. In my case, I had such a strong desire to get out of this program that I knew that I was ensnared in, I was so depressed, I was ready to do something serious for the first time in my life. <laughs> like, you know, get rid of the meat machine, maybe. <laughs> and uh, so I just screamed up at the galaxy, I want a sign! And I got it. And I thought it would go away, and it carried on for seven years. It's still there. And it takes me to Nelson, which is the gigantic pressure cooker capital of Japan. Sorry, Canada. See, I'm here now all the time. Nelson has a peculiar quality like perhaps this area and other areas have. How many people have read Horowitz's new book? Len Horowitz's new book, Biological Codes for the, Comi uh, Codes for the Coming Biological Apocalypse. Woo! If you think the last book about AIDS was scary, woo, read this one. Super duper uh, sicknesses coming our way. Guess where he settled by total synchronicity right underneath Nelson, a place called Sandpoint in our neighboring American state. There's, there's something going on around here 
We live in a special area, and it's no accident that we're all here today. I say use the place, use the energy, get. I suppose my final advice, maybe I could get five more minutes and try and wrap it up. Would that be all right? Nope. No, no, no. We've got to do it quick and neat. Their planet is being hijacked. We've got a bunch of Borgs in control. And yet, it is the dragon year. There will possibly be a sudden reversal, which the old holy books talked about in terms of the twinkling of an eye. Now, how do you get in contact with the twinkling of the eye deal? Because part of me has this insane idea that maybe the future of the Earth is not unitary, but could be multiple. If you start getting into physics and the observer effect and all of that realm and start thinking about how reality and consciousness is deeply intertwined irrevocably, then your choices start to take on gigantic meanings. Your choices start to literally program your DNA, because this is what we're talking about. The second book that my wife translated is called Indigo Children. It's about a new bunch of children on our planet now who appear to have a slightly different DNA structure. They are all extremely sovereign in their natures. How to recognize an indigo child? You see a three-year-old. I saw one on the beach the other day, naked, with his mother on the beach. And mom, he says, no, I want to pee. And mom says, okay, we'll go here. We're on the bushes. There's a couple of guys sitting here. We're going to watch it. And so she, she kind of looks at her mother like, mm, and she follows her mother to go in the bushes to pee, and then she says, nope, I want to pee here, <laughs> in my house. And there was just a little piece of wood that had become our house, and she pees right in front of us. And, and to the credit of her parents, her mother didn't do anything, right? Indigo children are the next shift in the DNA, apparently. They've been under study for 20 years. They're all over the world. They all share similar characteristics. The most important characteristic is they don't take shit from anybody. They are totally clear about why they are here. They know. As soon as they come in, I'm here for a new planet. I'm not putting up with the Babylonians anymore. And so they put them in a school system. They all freak out. And then what happens? Attention deficit. <laughs> Rytalin, Rytalin, Rytalin. <laughs> That's what's happening. They're doping them all. Because they know who they are. They're the next wave of evolved human beings. We're the current wave of evolving human beings. They're the next wave. Their DNA has shifted. And it's not all, it's not all science fiction about your DNA codes changing. Your DNA has been scrambled so bad. You don't know if it's Tuesday morning or Sunday afternoon half the time. Because there's been so much manipulation happened on our DNA at very multiple dimensional levels. And that's why altered states at work is so important. This three-dimensional consciousness is not going to cut it. It's not enough just to use the brain. Even the left and the right in being a da Vinci, it's still not enough. You've got to become familiar with the dimension that we are inexorably hurtling towards. But there is a gate. There is a gate at this dimensional doorway. And people have known about it for thousands of years. Stop him at the gate. Don't let him in. Don't let him into this dimension. Once they get in there, they'll find out they can do anything they want. They can freely express themselves. They can create. They can become gods and goddesses themselves. That's the gate that we are now standing in front of. Right? That's the gate, sovereign or slave gate. And there's going to be a few trick questions asked you at the gate here to make sure if you're worthy to get into that dimension that's been talked about and hinted about behind all of our traditions. Call it heaven or whatever you like. It's real. And we're headed there. If we start getting our trip together. I was wondering what my... Uh, Advice would be to everybody, because I can't tell you what to do. You're all sovereign people. That's the last thing we want to do. Do this, do that. Join this group. And this is where Japan gets really scary. Because people like me in Japan, they immediately want to turn into a guru cult figure. And the next thing you know, people come up after talk and they go, Can I shake your hand? 
I don't know, it feels kind of weird. Please. And you it's like a it's like a bunch of vampires, you know. <laughs> you know, you take your hand. <laughs> and you think, if I can get some of this juice, I'll be all right. And that's exactly what I'm not talking about. That's exactly what I'm not talking about. Stop being vampires and juicing up on other people's energy and juicing up on other people's ideas. Get your own ideas. Get your own connection to the sacred, your own unique, individual, perfectly creative way. Every single one is different. You've all got your ways. Now, I found out a real old-fashioned way to do it myself. It took me a long time of getting my head smashed in with magical plants, but I finally got it. <laughs> it's real simple. <laughs> it's real simple. It's called pray. That's all. So, that's it. <laughs> I hate to leave you in the lurch, but it's time to eat. And that's about it. So cheerio.